welcome to another OSHA Safety Pro course in the OSHA Safety Pro series. This course is about occupational noise exposure and hearing protection. We will discuss the OSHA standards 1926.52 and 1910.95. You will learn how to protect your hearing and in turn enjoy rewarding years of your life by preserving one of your most important senses required to sense the environment around you, your hearing. You will learn how to protect yourself, your colleagues, and those around you and keep them safe and free from hearing damage. As an added bonus for signing up for this course, in addition to the auto-generated certificate you will receive at the end of this course, I will also send you this premium certificate, this premium diploma with your name on it, my signature, and my OSHA Texas A&M Engineering Extension Service ID. My name is James. I'm bringing you over a decade of military, government, and private sector health and safety experience and leadership that I acquired in the trenches alongside hard-working men and women just like you. I've taken these trainings conducted in the field and I've brought them to you right to the palm of your hand. Use this course as you see fit. It's yours to do whatever you like with it once enrolled. Enroll your employees in it to maintain job compliance. Print up the slides and use them for trainings out in the field. Or use it to acquire compliance for a regulation or requirement for an upcoming contract. What you can also do is enroll one time and play this ugly mug in a conference room full of employees or out in the field for all your workers and certify everybody at once. Maybe you want to earn more. Maybe you want to level up on the job. Go for it. Use the skills from this course to impress management, colleagues, and even a potential client. Use the resources that I'm going to give you to be a safety leader and asset at your place of business. The teaching method for this course is designed to be quick and effective with your busy schedule in mind. Designed to be taken anywhere, whether it's in the comfort of your own home or on the tailgate of your work truck, without sacrificing the valuable content and quality required to keep you and those around you safe and returning home from work in the same manner, if not better, than when you left. The method is great when needing job compliance or for an upcoming job interview, this will be a great bullet to assist you in shining out above other applicants. In this course, we will cover the OSHA standard, identify dangerously loud and damaging noise environments, how to protect your hearing, types of hearing protection, and I will give you a solid noise exposure and hearing protection program. The ideal motivated student for this course is anybody involved in the general or construction industries, anyone who works in public safety, underground or above ground utilities, who works for a city or municipality. It's also for anybody who has a career in safety or is a safety leader at their place of work or business. It's also designed for anybody who wishes to level up their current safety career. Maybe you want to use this course to start a new career or expand a current skill set. Either way, you're in the right place. Thank you so much for considering taking this course. I want you now to be the hero. This is your time to shine. A real hero saves lives by saving people the pain and suffering that results from accidents ever happening in the first place. Now is your time to shine. Level up. Be that hero through prevention.
The following is some free content for you to use as a sample or however you like. Please forgive my rough videography. I'm not the best at it only because I belong out in the field with people like you out in the trenches getting it done. Enjoy! Our places of business and work can be dangerous environments. A safe condition can turn on us and instantly become dangerous in a second. We need our senses and our intellect to sense when the environment around us is starting to turn against us. We need to process that environment and pick up on when something is about to go wrong. Or we need our senses and our hearing to spring into action when somebody else needs our assistance. We need our senses and our hearing and our sight to identify hazards. We are carefully created human beings with intellects and minds and senses that we need to use to provide for our families. We expose ourselves to conditions that oftentimes seem very docile and harmless, but they are hurting us. They cause us to instill a sense of complacency within ourselves that we've done it this way the whole time for always and we're just going to keep on doing it. Yet, what unbeknownst to ourselves, we just keep on hurting us. And by not maintaining that level of awareness that our senses provide, we are in turn hurting our families because our families depend on us. This course teaches you to use your hearing to sense when a safe environment has now become dangerous. You will learn when a sound level within an environment becomes damaging to your hearing. We'll learn what professions are at risk. We will also learn how to protect ourselves against dangerous noise levels. We're going to study the hierarchy of safety and protection. We will also look at what makes a good solid hearing protection program. Use this course to shine. Take the resources I'm going to give you and take them to your management, take them to your place of business and set up or establish a hearing protection program with this course. If one already exists, use this course and its resources to enhance or build upon that course that already exists. You're going to impress somebody. This is where I'm calling on you to be a hero. And I know that sounds somewhat cheesy. But a real hero isn't somebody that jumps out of the sky wearing pajamas after all this pain and suffering has already take place, taken place. A real hero prevents anyone from ever having to endure that pain and suffering in the, in the first place. And that is what I'm calling you to be. OSHA's Occupational Noise Exposure and Hearing Protection OSHA standards 1926.52 and 1910.95. The law states, protection against the effects of noise exposure shall be provided when the sound levels exceed those shown in table D2 of this section when measured on the A scale of a standard sound level meter at slow response. We'll discuss table D2 in a moment. Secondly, when employees are subjected to sound levels exceeding those listed in Table D2 of this section, feasible administrative or engineering controls shall be utilized. If such controls fail to reduce sound levels within the levels of the table, personal protective equipment as required in Subpart E shall be provided and used to reduce sound levels within the levels of the table. Please make note of the highlighted words. OSHA is giving us the hierarchy 
of safety and protection. The words are subjected is indicative of the hazard that is subjected to the workers. If we cannot remove those subjected workers or remove the hazard from those workers, secondly, we apply administrative or engineering controls. And if the hazard still exists or the workers still must be subjected to that hazard, thirdly, and our final course of action is to apply the appropriate personal protective equipment. And we conduct this hierarchy in that order. We'll go over that in a later lecture. But first, what are decibels? Decibels is the measurement of sound intensity. Zero decibels is the lowest sound that can be heard by a human ear. 180 is the maximum. That's about the sound of a rocket launch at its launch pad. Exposure to 85 decibels or greater is dangerous. Here's OSHA's permissible noise exposure limits. If you are subjected to 90 decibels continuously, it is against the law for you to be subjected to that level of sound for over 8 hours. If the level goes up to 92 decibels, your day is shortened. You cannot be subjected to that level of sound for more than 6 hours. Nor can you be subjected to 95 decibels for any more than 4 hours. 85 decibels or greater, OSHA says it's too loud. At 90 decibels, hearing protection is required. So, decibels. Our job site inspections and our noise meter readings are going to be conducted in decibels. Decibels are how we measure sound. Zero being the faintest, faintest sound that the human ear can detect, 180 being the loudest, which is like a rocket ship launching right next to your face. If you live through that, your ears might be a little ringy or even bleeding. Experts all agree that at 85 decibels, the environment is already too loud. At 90 decibels, you must limit your exposure to that environment to 8 hours or put on hearing protection. If the sound level goes up to say 92 decibels, your exposure limit to that environment is no more than six hours. At 95 decibels, you must limit yourself to no more than four hours. Any longer at those levels, you must wear hearing protection. In regards to that hierarchy that we discussed in the previous slides, remember, if we are subjected to a hazard, first and foremost, we want to see an attempt to remove ourselves from that hazard or remove the hazard from us. Secondly, if we still must subject ourselves to that hazard, we apply administrative controls or rules or engineering measures to limit our exposure or limit the exposure to us. If we still must be exposed to that hazard after removing or if we cannot remove ourselves from the hazard or the hazard from us or applying administrative and engineering controls, then thirdly, we apply the appropriate personal protective equipment. In a nutshell, something easy to remember is that at 85 decibels, it's already too loud. At 90 decibels, hearing protection is required. If we don't carry a noise meter around our back pocket, how do we tell using our faculties and senses that the environment in which we're working in is hurting our hearing. Let's take a look. You may hear ringing or humming in your ears when you leave work. Or you have to shout to be heard by a coworker an arm's length away. You may also experience temporary hearing loss when leaving work. So, a really quick, simple on-the-job hearing test. If your coworker needs to shout for you to hear him at arm's distance, 
the job site may be too loud and you are at risk of hearing loss. Or quite simply, if you have to raise your voice or shout to be heard in the environment, the job site and the environment that you're working in is too loud and you need to be wearing hearing protection. Some good practices include hearing protection being worn if working within 10 feet of any concrete float, cutting or grinding machines or a machine that operates above 90 decibels. Again, how do we know that machine operates above 90 decibels? Well, if I have to shout to be heard around that machine, it's a safe bet it's operating at above 90 decibels. Wear hearing protection when within 10 feet of any jackhammer or electric hand, tall, hand saw or table saws. Don't wait until 90 decibels. At 85 decibels, go ahead and throw that hearing protection in. Also, pre-employment hearing exams are a good idea. They won't prohibit you from work, but they will assist you in getting an understanding as to how much hearing damage you already have so that you can take the appropriate measures in protecting what hearing you do have left. So, when you get home at the end of the day after a hard day's work and you're hearing some ringing in your ears or a humming in your ears, then you should be wearing hearing protection tomorrow when you get back to work. Also, having a shout at an employee for them to hear us when they're only arm's length away is another indicator that the work environment is dangerously noisy. If you experience any temporary hearing loss, that is also a good indicator that well, let's just say no noise meter is required. We already know with that temporary hearing loss that the environment is dangerously noisy and we must be wearing hearing protection.